1.2 billion people go through this annually. Yes, we're talking about menopause. If you're watching this video, you're likely one of those people wondering what is going on with you. In the previous video I did, I talked about all the different symptoms of menopause, perimenopause and menopause, what to expect, how it feels. In this video, I'm focusing on mental health, especially the three most important mental health challenges, most common. That's anxiety. As estrogen drops during premenopause and menopause, because estrogen interacts with serotonin in your brain, you start feeling like your emotional buffer is gone, like your luster is diminished, emotional well-being is seriously challenged, and anxiety creeps up and increases, especially if you had pre-existing anxiety, this hormonal change will exacerbate your pre-existing anxiety. Also, by the time you're perimenopausal or menopausal, you're in a stage of life that's already full of other things, careers, kids, challenges at home, aging parents, um, maybe you're relocating, maybe you're getting divorced. So there's a lot already going on in your life that by itself is stressful. But because your emotional buffer is gone, you'll experience that as heightened anxiety. Then there's the loss of sleep, which is a very common symptom of uh, perimenopause and menopause. And because of the lack of sleep, you cannot restore yourself. And that also increases anxiety. Um, you have a heightened sex sensitivity to stress. Uh, again, because of the loss of estrogen, because of the loss of progesterone in your system, uh, you are not as emotionally resilient as you think of yourself or remember yourself in not too distant history. <laughs> so because of your lower threshold for stress, it increases your anxiety. Um, then there's the physiological body changes, illnesses and injuries. Uh, which are common as we get older, maybe past injuries are coming to haunt us. Um, we heal slower because of diminished estrogen. Estrogen is directly linked to your body's ability to heal and repair itself. So that becomes very frustrating whenever we have a health problem that's anxiety inducing the unknowns of getting older and how you're gonna deal with things are also anxiety inducing then there's the brain fog that's number two the inability to focus and concentrate the forgetfulness all that uh, is again exacerbated by sleep disturbance um, as the estrogen drops, it affects parts of your brain that specifically deal with memory and um, like the, the hippocampus. And so you will feel more forgetful and more confused because the, these parts of your brain, the capacity, their function has diminished. Then by this age, most people have a few extra pounds, sometimes way many extra pounds. So you have comorbidities in a way, um, diabetes, high blood sugar, high blood pressure. You're basically, you're, you have serious metabolic sh shifts probably. And that's definitely contributing to brain fog and inability to focus and then there comes the depression that's the number three challenge during menopause something like 20 to 25 percent of women going through the process will experience depression of various degrees and the women in women in perimenopause are two to four times more likely to experience depression. Again, that's related to body changes and some of it is challenges accepting the aging process. So people feel down about that. Um, 
if you already had pre-existing depression uh, okay so you're a good candidate to increase your depression um, there's socioeconomic factors again by this age in your 40s in your 50s you know finances are a huge chunk of your preoccupation with life <laughs> so if things are not going well uh, financially socioeconomically this will coincide with your biological changes increase depression but frequently let's assume everything is fine your health is fine your finances your social economic stuff is fine but yet you feel depressed actually sometimes that's not depression that's the fatigue and the brain fog together misdiagnosed as depression so often they put women on antidepressants when they're just having premenopausal symptoms or menopausal symptoms and the antidepressants don't seem to help because again this is not actual depression it's just the brain fog and um the fatigue okay so what to do about it well the first thing you need to do about it is have a serious discussion with your doctor um, and do not accept answers like, well, you know, you're just getting older and this is natural and all women go through it. Yes, it is true. It is natural and all women go through it, but we don't have to suffer unnecessarily, especially when our lives are so crazy demanding these days. Um, advocate for yourself. So you need to educate yourself on the subject. Figure things out ahead of time almost and then go to your doctor and have a meaningful discussion as to what are your options and what can they do for you and how far along you are in the process. You know, that conversation should definitely involve hormone replacement therapy. So you need to talk about estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, all these hormones get out of balance and greatly diminish as we're going through this process and that's one of the main reasons why we're having these psychological mental health problems challenges and often the hrt by itself fixes 80 90 percent of your issues uh, but not everybody is a good candidate for hrt so that's why you need to have your doctor's consultation and there are some natural remedies that maybe if HRT is not appropriate, then what natural remedies you can, uh, you can use. Now, I haven't seen any research that really supports the efficacy of natural remedies, but other people have other opinions. So I don't want to really get into a conversation about supplements over here, but it's something you could research. And then the number one thing is quality sleep. Okay, well, that's the number two thing because the number one thing is HRT. If you take care of HRT, so if you, if you balance your hormones, it will probably take care of your sleep deprivation because progesterone helps you sleep. Progesterone also helps you with your depression. It's the happy hormone. So uh, if you take care of your hormones, chances are you're going to fix your sleep, but you can do things even if HRT is not an option for you, like have really good sleeping schedule, not compromise around your sleeping schedule, uh, not do things that would otherwise cause you to um, diminish your, the quality of your sleep, like you don't eat very late, um, you make sure your environment is comfortable, um, you know, there are a lot of things you can do to improve the quality of your sleep even like changing your bed or removing distractions from from your life like the phone and the tv um, then manage stress and you can do that through better planning to-do lists um, you know looking ahead so you're not always Mm, you know in an emergency mode <laughs> and you can delegate so how much of what you think you should be doing could be delegated to others family members kids co-workers and then what things can you say no to if your plate is already full or if something is not something you're interested in you can say no so learning to say no in order to minimize your load and minimize your stress 
then go outside and spend time in nature and sunshine because that alleviates depression, alleviates stress. So that helps you stay mentally healthy. You know, there's tons of studies about how looking at green or having sunshine um, deals, especially, uh, you know, people that are affected from seasonal affective disorder. And any moment of sunshine, you should be outside as much as you can and soak up the sunshine. Um, then clean up your diet, increase your protein, and increase your fiber. So, uh, yeah, you're probably tired of hearing this, but it's a huge one. So eating fatty foods makes you more sluggish, increases your brain fog. Then you drop a ball somewhere, then that increases your stress and anxiety. And you can see how your lunch choice can affect your mood all the way for the rest of the day and beyond. Um, as women age, and again, because of decrease and changes in hormones, testosterone, estrogen, uh, the body composition changes. So we're losing muscle mass and gaining fat. So our diets should be tailored to that change. And so that's why the extra protein, um, less sugar, obviously, less fatty, unhealthy foods, and lots of fiber because, again, um, the hormones affect digestion and elimination. So you need that extra fiber. And also uh, estrogen, as estrogen decreases, uh, cholesterol increases. So having extra fiber in your diet will definitely help you with maintaining your cholesterol. And then, of course, exercise. Um, who wants to exercise when they feel tired and bloated? And the answer is when you least want to exercise, that's when you absolutely must exercise. And this could be just like regular walks. You can start small and increase your level of exercise. Um, you know, go on hikes on weekends. Uh, you can exercise through fun activities like dancing um, or if there's a sport you like to play. Uh, but you need to maintain a healthy weight. Again, you do that, uh, yes, because it's good for you physically, but as you're taking care of your physiology, that is eliminating unnecessary stressors and uh, preventing avoidable um, health conditions and then that's helping your mental health as well. The next video I'm going to do because there's a fourth component that is really important for menopausal women that gets very little attention because who the hell cares about menopausal women, right? But that's your sex life. So uh, what happens to your sex life and how to maintain a rewarding, fun sex life as you're going through menopause and on the other side. That's in the next video. Like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.